There are some houses that I go in and immediately I'm in a filthy mood. <laughs> This week, love and war in Buckinghamshire as two couples battle to find their perfect palace. We find ideal homes. I've walked in here and think, let's put an offer in now. I, lo I love it. I love this house. And I'm at the stage I'm actually imagining our furniture in here. Way to go. Winner. We're in there. But then we find ourselves in the doghouse. I don't love this house enough. It's not... <gasps> I don't care how much it is I have to have. If I was going to be very difficult about it. I don't want you to be very difficult, so please don't try. When you're looking for a place to house a young family, Buckinghamshire's bang on. This week, we're house hunting for two couples with children. Andrew and Emma want to be near family and good schools. And Anna-Marie and Shane found that the luck of the Irish hasn't helped them find their dream pad. Just a stone's throw from London, Buckinghamshire is the area of choice this week as our two couples attempt to combine high-flying careers in the city with the peace and quiet of small-town life in order to bring up their young families. But they're not alone. With great transport links, famously good schools and quiet countryside living, Buckinghamshire's not exactly a well-kept secret, especially amongst London city types with cash to splash. Despite two healthy budgets, I suspect finding a property to suit our house hunters may cause us a few headaches. Shane and Anna-Marie Mugen originally hail from the Emerald Isle, but moved over to England's green and pleasant land. We left Ireland because um, originally I got a great job offer in the UK. That was a career opportunity I couldn't turn down. I didn't want to leave it at Anne-Marie coming with me. So we got engaged on Christmas Day and we left about four or five days later and here we are. Two years ago, they started renting in Buckinghamshire with their two boys, Charlie and William. I think it's really good for our children to be here because it's countryside. I grew up in the countryside and I turned out OK. And it's a lovely area to live in and it's somewhere we'd like to stay around. With an easy commute to his work in London and the appeal of great schools for their boys, they're enjoying the quality of country life that Buckinghamshire is giving them and have decided to stay put. Buying a house, it's important in terms of us getting established. It doesn't feel like we've really put down roots here. Sick of pouring money down the drain in rent, they want their own home. In the 18 months they've been looking, they've seen over 50 properties, so why on earth haven't they found their dream home? Time to get to the bottom of it. You've looked at 50 houses. That is a huge number. When you go to view it, there's four other people also fighting for the same property. So it's proved impossible to get what you want. I think we've actually, we've, I think in a way it's helped us to look for so long because we're more sure about what we want now. Okay. We know the things we can compromise on and we know the things that we definitely don't want to compromise on. OK, let's talk about it. <laughs> what don't you want to compromise on? Be garden size. And that's really come out a lot in the last kind of few weeks, really. Mm -hmm. um, we're really pro kind of fresh air for the boys, and we like to have them outside as much as possible. We don't mind taking on a property that is not perfect right now, but there's room or scope to do things to it. Our wish list would include at least four bedrooms, preferably two en suite. Room for a swimming pool. And a pony. Uh, and a pony. <laughs> With that list of demands, it's no wonder they haven't found anywhere yet. What does that mean for Anna Marie and Shane? For 850 grand, the house must have four or five bedrooms with three reception rooms. It has to be detached with the ability to add value. And it must have a garden, a big one. Our other couple, Emma and Andrew Jarvis, sold their property last year and resorted to drastic measures. We sold our house a couple of months ago and we're now living with them as parents and we'd like to find a place for ourselves. We're starting to get a bit on top of each other so we do need our own space. But Andrew's a city boy, so why the shires? The main reason why we're moving is for the school system in Buckinghamshire. It's very good and although Charlie's only two at the moment, this house that we're buying now is a lifetime house. They've also been searching forever with no luck. We've been looking for a new property for about 18 months. We've viewed maybe five properties. So, yeah, we're really desperate now. We need some help. Go gently on them, Kirsty. Don't worry, Phil. I'll be very careful. Stand back, Buckinghamshire. She's going to blow. You are now living with your mum, Emma. Mm. And you have been looking for 18 months. Yes. Yeah. And you have seen five properties in yeah. that space of time. Yes. Yeah. Which, frankly, is pathetic. <laughs> yep. <laughs> the reason it's not good is very simple. 
It's only likely that per month, one house which fits your criteria is going to become available. And that's a very generous interpretation. And if you're not in there schmoozing the estate agents, you're never even going to know. It's going to be on and off before you, you know, before you know what's happened. Yeah, we appreciate it. We haven't seen enough properties. We've sat in the comfort of our home and, and looked on the internet. Remind me again, your main requirements. Looking for preferably four bed, but we would consider three beds. Um, preferably three reception rooms and obviously a good sized garden. Over and above all of that, we've got to be happy. Mm. Yes, yeah. And I think what makes that is very unquantifiable, but you don't find it by looking on the internet. No. You tell them, Kirsty. I don't know how these two thought they were going to buy a house. With 625 grand to spend, top of the list for this couple is location. It must be near some good schools. They're looking for a four-bedroom character home near Emma's family. So we're looking for two houses in opposite ends of Buckinghamshire. And what a difference a few miles make. I'm in South Buckinghamshire with Shane and Anna Marie, who are sick of pouring money down the drain by renting. They're looking for a four-bed property with a large garden and the ability to add value, all for £850,000. And I'm with Andrew and Emma, who are feeling that living with Emma's parents is a little claustrophobic. With 200 grand less, they want four beds, a decent garden near a good school in North Buckinghamshire. I smell double trouble. I've been searching high and low. Are you concerned? Yes, because I'm working on this kind of Venn diagram, like at school, you know, there's one circle which is being close to the mum, another circle which is the schools, another circle which is the garden sites, and there's this teeny-weeny little spot in the middle which might just be the right house. OK. Well, my guys have been out and seen so much, and they've refused so much. I, I get the impression that Shane is looking for a deal. He's more concentrated, more focused on the deal than he is the house. Just tell him, you're the deal maker, you'll decide whether it's the right yeah. price or the wrong price, yeah. and he can shove that in his pipe and smoke it. I'll, I'll, I'll let him know you said that. <laughs> well, I'm going to add another few properties to Shane and Anna Marie's list. Hopefully they'll last. Starting just 30 miles from London in the Chalfronts, to the east of Buckinghamshire, which is well inside their preferred area. As you can see, this is a cul-de-sac. What have we got? Six houses in here. We're going to be looking at this house. This executive house in Chalfont St Giles should suit them down to the ground. Remember that list, Kirsty? Four beds, a couple of reception rooms and a great garden. At 900 grand, it's a chairman of the board price tag, but we should be able to negotiate it down somewhat closer to their 850 grand budget. It's a very traditional layout. We've got double living room there, kitted out study, dining room, and through to uh, the kitchen. So I think, in terms of a layout for a contemporary way of family living, I liked it very much. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd agree, actually, it's lovely. It's really I do, nice. I like it, it's lovely. They asked for a big garden, and Mr Spencer's done his best. But do they want to ride on mower big garden, a wedding marquee big garden, or a football pitch big garden? From the conservatory here, we get an idea of the garden. If it was all on one level, it would feel a lot bigger. It's not a kicker football garden, particularly. It's a hide-on mummy behind the shrubs garden. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the flip side. There is the chance to have a few adventures and things, because you've got trees mm. and shrubs and, and places to hide from mummy. I can see the appeal to young kids. The challenge I have is that it's smaller than I think I'd like it to be. It's the right house on the wrong plot. The garden is just not big enough. It's not, I suppose, long enough. It's just not a football garden. I think that's going to be... Okay. It's not what I imagined the boys to be out playing in. You do have to have an enormous garden to have a really decent football pitch. In I garden. know, it's not essentially a football pitch, but, you know, where would you put the pony? <laughs> <laughs> or the swimming pool? I've forgotten about the pony, and I tried to forget about the swimming pool. It really is the right house, and the plot's pretty good for this area. But those aren't happy faces, Phil. It's fantastic. It's beautiful. You almost sound dejected and unhappy that it's beautiful. Ever so slightly, because it's, it really is the right house, again, I'm repeating myself, but the right house on the wrong plot. The garden's that important? Definitely. Well, I have to say, I'm a bit dejected here, because they, the house is great, as they readily say it's great. It's also over budget at 900,000. It's not perfect, but the garden's not that bad, is it? Dearie me, I think the garden's going to haunt me. 
This week we're in Buckinghamshire, one of the country's most expensive counties. We're helping two couples find a family home. Shane and Anna Marie want a large house with an even larger garden. While Emma and Andrew want a house they can grow into. All the properties we're showing Andrew and Emma are within catchment areas of schools they want their son to get into. And the first house we're showing them is just five miles from two of them in Aylesbury. So it should really ring their bell. They're looking for a three or four bed character house with a couple of reception rooms. Emma wants to be near her family, so I'm taking them to see this 19th century house in the village of Oving. I'm so into this house for about 5,000 different reasons, all of which I will explain to you. But the okay. number one reason is driving around this area, all the houses are much older mm -hmm. and they're low ceilings. They're little barn conversions and they're two or three cottages knocked into one. Yeah. This is a Victorian house. It's got proper high ceilings. It's got big windows. It's got light rooms. Yes. It's really strong from that Very point of view. Very good looking house. It's a good looking yeah, house. Yeah. With three reception rooms, three bedrooms and a wraparound garden, this is perfect for them. It's been renovated and redecorated throughout and it's bang on budget at £625,000. Now there is a front door, but the family tend to use this door. Okay. So what you've got here is through there, a little playroom, downstairs bathroom, and then you've got big family kitchen. It's beautiful. And through here, you can either use that as a study or, again, an area for toys. It's beautiful. It is. It's beautiful. really nice. It is really beautiful. It's been really nicely done. And the thing I love about it is it's perfect for boys because it's, it's got this easily clean floor. Yeah. Yeah. You've got your playroom. You've got a downstairs bathroom with room for a changing mat. Oh. So, you know, you know that thing when you've got a small one, a toddler and a baby? You, you want, want No, you don't want to trade upstairs. No. You know, there's a loo down there when yeah. you're potty, potty training. training. That's you know, it sounds time. really silly, but you know no. I said there are a thousand reasons I like this house. Yeah. They're all quite small and simple. But they make a difference but they make to your difference. everyday life. And they're yeah. not things... I mean, you're not going to put that on your list. Now... Nearly everything in this house is beautifully laid out, with the exception of this room. Beyond that sofa is about three foot. Yeah. And because of the television being there, they put that little chaise long there. We well, need to put that chaise long in the window, mm -hmm. the big sofa there. It's a room that works. It's a it's lovely good. light room. Yeah. Love the bay window. It's lovely. Everything's joined together. Very well. Yeah, it flows. It flows. I mean, I do believe in feng shui. There are some houses that, and I'm Phil will tell you, I go in and immediately I'm in a filthy mood. <laughs> they just, something, something is you down. wrong. Mm. And then sometimes I go into a house and I think, you know what, I move into here very happily. I can see how my life, my family would work. Yeah. yeah. And everyone would pop into their little slots really happily. Mm. It's not just feng shui that puts you in a bad mood or sop. You haven't asked me about the price. No, we haven't. It's on at 625. Filled with horror? No. No? No, not at nope, all. No, not at all. Right, okie dokie. Do you want to see the rest? Please. Okie dokie. Oh, this is going very well. <laughs> a bit too well, Kirsty. They've seen about five other properties, so I wouldn't get the contract out just yet. So what you've got up here, you've got two really big bedrooms like this, a third perfectly respectable double room. Mm -hmm. And then downstairs, if you want to put a sofa bed in the playroom off the kitchen, that's got the ensuite bathroom. Because if you've been staying with your parents, then I think... <laughs> Only fair, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, so we will probably be over. Okay. The cynic in me thinks that this is way too early for any congratulations. But there's another part of me which thinks, way to go, winner, we're in there. Kirsty, you know what happens when you say things like that. I know we did say Oving was a place we'd consider, but I, it is one of the places that's furthest away from my family within our search area. It is, yeah, and that was now quite I've got, important. Yeah, so. but I, that could be something I could compromise on. The distance from your mum's I always knew was in the search criteria. Yeah. It's not one we've brought up at this house. No. 16.5 miles to Stony Stratford. Yes, I know it doesn't sound an awful lot. It doesn't sound a lot no. in the country. I don't want to dismiss your fears. No, but if but there was a, 
equally nice property a bit closer, I'd It'd be, be good. even happier. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I'm not going to discount this. Property. All I can say is it's a testament to the niceness of your parents that after living with them for over two months, you are still keen to be within shouting distance. <laughs> they probably would like us to be as far away as possible. <laughs> so, are we wa walking away from this house saying that it's a maybe? Absolutely. Yes. Well, I've pleased Andrew and Emma. Is the luck of the Irish rubbing off on you, Phil? I wish it was, but our house search hasn't exactly blossomed yet. Shane and Anna Marie felt the first house we looked at didn't have a big enough garden. So I'm taking them to a place five minutes away, which has the biggest one we've seen on our entire search. Knowing that the garden was really the key issue mm. for the first house, I thought I nailed it with this house. Yeah, you have. Ooh, wow. um, mm -hmm. It's fantastic. It's 300 foot long. Wow. Uh, it's by some distance the best garden that we found. So there really is room for a pool, a football pitch. I don't know if you get a pony in, but <laughs> um, you know it goes right as far back as you can see. Wow. Oh, okay. This country house in Chalfont St Peter will really test Shane and Anna Marie. It may have a huge garden, but the price they'll pay for that in this area is a house that needs serious work. It has views of fields and woodland and could be perfect for them with four small bedrooms, two receptions and a large kitchen. But to get it up to their tough standards, it'll need some major renovation. I've got a plan that might solve all their problems. What I had thought was that you would take that guard down mm -hmm. and build yourself a two-storey extension to the house. So you're probably getting another third of the house. That idea is really appealing. It's not just the garage that needs work, but at 100 grand below budget, they've got a lot of money to play with. It's got character, this house. It's got lots and lots of things going for it, but you are going to have to sort of roll your sleeves up and, uh, and get stuck in. Yes. Uh, that there's a lot to do, and I don't think there is even one room that you wouldn't want to do. OK. okay. However, um, it does come in under budget. It's 750,000. Shane, you've got a big smile on your face. I'm just seeing lots and lots of possibilities. And I think that's more exciting for me. I can, you know, as opposed to the last house, which was... Finished and done. Finished and done, yeah. and that's it. This one, and because it's quite attractive on the budget, there's quite a lot of yeah. you know, money in the bank to still do other things, and I can see things in this house. I think Shane is seeing pound signs in front of his eyes. But I want to find out what's going on behind his eyes. For me, my number one priority is the, you know, the potential, the opportunity. It, it, for me, that's kind of key, getting a good return on what you spend your money on. When you say, for me... I think Emery is more keen on finding a property that we don't have to do a huge amount of work to. It doesn't stop us from establishing those routes very quickly and getting connected with the community that we live within. Does it make you nervous? Not really. I mean, I can see the potential in it, mm. definitely. My only concern would be how long it would take and, you know, being kind of... The, keeping that balance right, you know, of, mm. like, kind of, who's going to project manage it? Will Anna Marie be able to look past all the work to see what an amazing house this could be for the family? And will Shane be able to see how much work it would be for her? Ideally, I imagine that we would be in a house that needed some work, as in changing the floors or painting the walls, mm. that kind of thing. Not totally, not construction work, not yeah, and full this is, on. This project. is a big project. And I don't mean this in a negative sense, but it feels like hard work. This is a yeah. hard work house for me. I can't say that their reactions to this house were a massive surprise because Shane's a businessman and he was always going to be excited about the opportunity to add value. That's what he likes doing, that's what excites him. Anne Marie, on the other hand, was also always going to be left with running the job and dealing with the sort of day to day aspects of that. So I think they've got a bit of a bit of thinking to do on that, a bit of decision making. First it was the right house in the wrong plot. Now, it's the wrong house in the right plot. These two will need to come together and compromise over something soon, otherwise I shall lose the plot. Well, Chalfonts and Peter didn't seem to work for them, so I'm taking them to the other side of Buckinghamshire, to the village of Bledlow Ridge. Property-wise, the vendors have renovated, expanded and decorated, giving the house three reception rooms, five double bedrooms and two en-suites, all to a high standard. 
with no work to do, project management phobic Anna Marie should love this one. The house itself is on the market at 895,000. Wow, that's fantastic. This is a very big house. Okay. That's no, super. That's beautiful. I love that fireplace, absolutely. Wow. Fab. Well, at least they're smiling. As you can see, they've spent quite a lot of money and care and time and designing the garden, mm. just as they've done with the house. I'm not sure that it adds to the garden in terms of it being child-friendly and mm. room to run about. But again, it's, it's, it's effectively a blank canvas. We can do so much with this. I mean, the space is good. It's a good-sized garden. It's got everything that you need. It's a well-loved house. Mm. Well, they finished it superbly well. No, it's really nice, absolutely. Tell me, what's your heart saying to you? It's a fantastic house. Um, in some ways, I'm slightly disappointed that it's perfect. I'm also kind of thinking, gosh, if there's only some bits and pieces we could do ourselves, it would be great. Don't make that hard for yourself. <laughs> you go to work to make a living. You, are, you work very, very hard. Yeah. And that's where you're making your money, to pay the mortgage to enable you to, mm. you to buy a house like this. Mm. Don't, make, don't set out to make it hard. That's nicer. <laughs> Although I might not get away with that piece of advice if Kirsty had been here. It's done within an inch of its life, and it's it been is, done well. Definitely, I bet Shane's disappointed with that. <laughs> he said, it, "Yeah, I wouldn't say disappointed because he likes the house, mm. but there's a, I can see there's a bit of a niggle going on. If only it wasn't finished. However, mm -hmm. he also said to me that he'd probably finish it like this. So exactly, what, exactly. The I, I actually, in looking around, and I can't actually see anything I would really change. I mm. really like it." I'm trying to imagine, I'm at the stage, I'm actually imagining our furniture in here and all the shopping I could do to buy more furniture to fill the other rooms. That's good, that's positive. <laughs> yes. If I was going to be very difficult about that... I don't want you to be very difficult, so please don't try. <laughs> <laughs> Let's stop, stop while we're doing well, make me feel good. No, I think, no, I think you've done an astonishing Absolutely. job. I think it's, you know, the, uh, you know, the one thing I would that would just do it all for me would be if the garden was very slightly bigger yeah. and I had that capacity to just add, you know, potentially a pool or something else in the future, that yeah. would be just astonishing. Something that we notice searching for these houses at, at this kind of, you know, under a million budget is it's, the houses have been done. Anyone who's living in a very nice family house valued at 800,000 has watched the property shows, read the magazines, looked on the internet and they're into their houses and, and, and They've finished them. So they're either completely undone and therefore an utter renovation project, or they're done. And there's very, very little in between that, up at this top end of, top end of you know, nine and a million quid. Yeah. Mm. And that's becoming obvious. I mean, I think that's also something that we're beginning to recognise as well. All very positive, but don't worry, we haven't finished yet. Got another one to show you. Although, I'm not entirely sure that I need to show them another one. I think this is bang on, and they've compromised. Both of them have come together. It's fantastic to see. How about family-focused Andrew and Emma? Have you found a house any nearer her parents yet? As a matter of fact, I have. We're in Padbury, a chocolate box village that should melt their hearts. It's not all sweet, though. This house is well over budget, but there are lots of good reasons for bringing them here. This is the jewel in our crown, guys. This is idyllic. This is a beautiful cottage. Gorgeous. I really am treating them like royals today. Just a 10-mile carriage ride from Emma's parents, the cottage has four bedrooms, four reception rooms, and the crowning glory, two huge unconverted barns. Perfect for a growing family. All for the princely sum of £675,000. 50 grand over their budget, but it really is negotiable. Now, budget. Yes. How had you seen this on the internet? We, we did. Had, yes. Do you know what it's on at? I think it was on at 675, I think. Spot That's on. That's what stopped us from coming to view it. Yes. Yeah. But it's been on for three months, and the vendors have found something in a neighbouring village which they've set their heart on. Okay. Right. So I think there is quite a degree of flexibility within that price. And it really, really, for you two, mm -hmm. has a lot 
of the long term. Yeah. Absolutely. The house itself is big, but it also has these two amazing barns, yeah. which are the perfect place for dumping teenagers. Ooh. Oh, it's a lovely mm -hmm. light bedroom. <gasps> I That's love gorgeous. it. I love the quirky door. And a lovely view out of that window. I love the high ceilings. This is our bedroom. I love it. It's always a hard one, this, when you take somebody to see something that's way over their budget and then it's down to me. If they really want it, I've got to negotiate it. It's worth the extra money and it's a really good long-term family house. And with the current market conditions favouring the buyers, negotiating this down won't necessarily be easy, but certainly not as unrealistic as it would have been just a few months ago. Now, this is what I call a dining room. Why? I absolutely adore the flagstone floor and that fireplace. You can just imagine Christmas dinners with all the family. It feels like somewhere I'd love to live. It is a uh, 15 to 20 year house. Absolutely. Longer. I could Longer. see us staying here forever. Until... Why would we, why would we need any more space? <gasps> wow, look at the space. Why? So long term. There are lots potential. of things we could do. Space for boys and playthings. So, can you see where the extra money is being spent? Yes. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. It's the feel of the house, I think. It just, it's been very well put together. They've made a lot of good use of the space that they've got available to them. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of space anyway to start off with. Yeah. I've walked in here and think, let's put an offer in now. I, lo I love it. I love the village, I love the location. There's so many things I love about it. It's well worth it, but unless we can strike a bargain, Andrew and Emma simply don't have the budget. We're house hunting in Buckinghamshire with two couples who are sick to the back teeth of house hunting. Unfortunately, Kirsty is just plain sick. She's taken to her bed. She's left me to handle things on my own. On the bright side, though, we have already found two houses that I'm hoping are just what the doctor's ordered. There's Phil, stoical as ever and always looking on the bright side. My couple are in good hands. Andrew and Emma are looking for a four-bedroom character house with a good-sized garden for £625,000. And they've liked both properties I've shown them so far. This is the house that we've come to see. Wow. Um, Genuinely stuffed full of character, oh, built in yeah. the 1600s, um, built as three cottages. Oh, okay. Uh, and, and now as, as one very lovely detached house. Beautiful. Phil, you're getting a good in here. After the triumph of the last cottage, I had planned to show them this quirkier one with a totally different interior. They're either going to fall in love with this one or it'll confirm how much they like the last. Originally three cottages, this property in the village of Marsworth has been converted into a large four-bedroom house with three reception rooms. It's a unique property, and because of that, it is hard to establish an accurate value. The vendors are looking for something in the region of 700 grand, but I reckon we could negotiate it down to suit. There are three of these smallish reception rooms. So this ends up as something of a sort of passageway hallway. Yeah, I must admit, I did think it was the hallway when we walked in. This does feel a bit claustrophobic mm. in here. But maybe the thing about this one as well is the previous one was finished and we could mm. see... No, I think this is fine. It's white walls. Take away all the furniture, put your own things in. There's nothing wrong with the finish in here. I'm not offended by anything in here. It's grade two listed mm. and that restricts things that you might wish to do to it. Like knocking walls down. Like knocking walls down and materially changing the characters. You can't right. alter any of the beams, for instance. Mm. You couldn't change the floor. There would be restrictions on extensions out the back. That worries me a bit. That worries me a lot, because I don't feel that there's any one room in the house that is big enough for us. No. This is the house that you would need to love. This is the, this is the one that you choose because you just adore the beams the fireplace, the floor, but it, it means that you have to live in a certain way. Mm. I don't love this house enough to make it the house that we would buy. Oh, poor Phil. They were loving everything I showed them. Not too ill to pass comment, I see. I think that's exactly the problem. They couldn't get the last property out of their heads. 
Fair enough. Well, no rest for the wicked. Time you headed south again. My other two house hunters, Shane and Anna Marie, are looking for a four bed property with a large garden. The last one I took them to seemed to be too perfect for Shane's business brain. Nowhere to add value, apparently. So I'm taking them to an even bigger house that needs a little work. It's not a renovation project, but it does need a bit of tidying up, tarting up. Okay. Good. But the price is a million. Right. Hmm. Um, it's empty, it's been empty for quite some time, it's been owned as an investment. First thoughts, Anna Marie? Let's have a look. Come on then. Hardly a vote of confidence, Phil. This huge house in the village of Chartridge near Chesham has six bedrooms, three bathrooms and two reception rooms. It's been on the market for quite a while, so the price tag of a million pounds should be negotiable. That being said, it is relatively good value for the area, and with some tender loving care, they should be able to add even more. This is just over 3,000 square foot, this house. Right. So it is, it's massive. This is a 24 foot room as the main living room. You're not looking excited, either of you. I don't love it instantly. Not as much as I did the house before. Um, I'd have to see the rest of it first before sure. I could make a proper judgment on it, but my gut, feel is, gut is, mm. is not loving it initially. It's not, oh, I don't care how much it is I have to have it. I certainly don't have that feeling, unfortunately, which I, I, I did a little bit on mm. the other house. Looks like this one's not hitting the mark. The area of land that you own isn't massive, but you do look out on open land. Mm. That's it's a, a major compromise. It's a big issue, and it's a big compromise. Mm. I mean, it ticks quite a lot of the other boxes, because you can see past what needs to be done. But I think with, with all that money and effort and as a house, I think you're going to end up with a property that's not going to be worth more than you're going to pay for it and spend time on, so... And that's because of the garden? I think so. I think this house is limited by its garden. I don't want to drag you around a house that doesn't come up to scratch, particularly when we've seen more positive things. Mm. But if, it, if it's feeling expensive and the garden isn't up to scratch, which is absolutely on the wish list, mm. Mm. It's, it's a no, isn't it? I'm afraid I so. Think so. Yeah. This one's pushing up daisies for Shane and Anna Marie. It's my old foe, the garden. Chin up, Phil. They love the five bed house. And my luck's changed already. I'm back in the north of the county in the chocolate box village with Andrew and Emma, taking a second look at the cottage they fell in love with. Good boy, Phil. Never doubted you for a moment. And it's no wonder the property is beautiful, practical, and those barns make it a real forever family home. Now, I have to tell you, this, I think, is my favourite house out of both searches. Yeah, we're excited about seeing it again. I think probably are. you need to use your head and you need to use your heart. OK. And we'll yeah. swap okay. around. OK, we'll yeah. try. Come on, then. Now, it's not any secret, is it, that, that you love this house? No secret at all. Um, no. So what we're here to, to, to try and assess is how much you'd be prepared to pay for it. Mm. Um, it's, it's 675 is the asking price, and I'm sorry to say that there was a second viewing that took place on it this morning. Um, so there, there is, or there may well be, some competition by the end of the day. OK. Don't forget, the vendors have already found somewhere they like too. Well, this is the slightly more sort of alternative room, isn't it? It is. It's a good boy's room. Oh, a young boy's dream bedroom, I think. Yeah. Definitely. We have thought about it, though, and originally we thought, great young boy's bedroom, but we might actually take that out. Take this and, level? Yeah, we'll and, and make it into the main bedroom for ourselves. Ah. Because it's a, it's a good yeah. space. Yeah. At 675 grand, this property is 50,000 over their 625 budget. But I agree with Kirsty, we really should be able to negotiate them down. However, only Andrew and Emma can decide their comfort level. So how are we doing with it, Andrew? Very well. Still yeah. looks as good. Yeah. Still Love feeling very more. positive. So much space. It's just got more space than we asked for. How would you feel about spending 675,000? Well, I know we can't. I w if we had the money, I would spend that on this house because yeah. I do think it's worth it. I love this house, but I won't do anything rash. A very, very sensible couple. 
desperately trying to analyse this house in the correct way, which I, I do believe that they are doing. However, the sharks are circling and that other buyer, it's the second viewing. I'm worried. The sharks are circling, but not to worry, Mr Spencer, you're the killer whale. Thanks very much. I'll certainly be doing my best to pull something clever out the bag to get the vendors to bite. I'm afraid this is where it gets a bit awkward. Um, you've got some big decisions to take and we know that there is somebody else sniffing around that property. Um, they haven't made an offer. They've gone home, they've said to the agent they're going to think about it and they're going to get back to him. Okay. Um, the property is outside of your comfort zone by some distance. You can't get to the asking price. No. Um, how are you feeling about it? I think that we're in a strong position. I think that we're in an interesting market and if we don't make an offer, then we'll never know whether we could have had the property or not. Gone into all the jars and all the cupboards. <laughs> we found another 10,000, so we're now at 635. Nice. And that, that would be it. Absolute. That That's top comfort. Well, I think given that, we can, because it is some distance yeah. off, we should just Tell go in all guns blazing. Yeah. This is it. We're not here to mess about, yeah. try and be clever or negotiate. Yeah. That is the offer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mark, it's Phil Spencer. Hi. Um, we've just had a long chat about things. Well, in fact, it wasn't that long um, because uh, they do want to they do want to make an offer on the property. Uh, they cannot, I'm afraid, get anywhere near the asking price. The offer, and it is their best and final offer, uh, is six hundred and thirty-five thousand pounds. Thanks very much. Good luck. Bye bye. It's going to come down to the other people yeah, and yes. what, what they have decided to They'll do. They'll probably want to wait, won't they, to find out I would imagine so. Made, yeah. It's a real risk, this one, but Andrew and Emma are fantastic buyers. I hope the vendor doesn't ignore the position they're in. No chain, mortgage agreed and a flexible moving-in date. It might just work. Hello? Hello, Mark. OK. The 635 is the top figure. So can I just say I will leave it on the table? All right. Well, thank you very much for your help. Much appreciated. Cheers, Mark. Bye-bye. I'm afraid it's been rejected. OK. That's fair enough. Um, they have a figure of 650,000 in their mind. Right. Okay. Uh, they feel they have enough interest to wait and see what everybody else wishes to do. That's what we expected, isn't it? So, so not, not surprised at all. Mm. We'll Disappointed, keep... but not surprised. It was an ambitious offer, but it's still on the table. We haven't walked away yet. Keep your fingers crossed there on your sickbed, Kirsty. Will do. Let's hope you have a bit more luck with Shane and Anna Marie. Have they been leading you up the garden path, or are they interested in any of the properties? The third property I took them to see was the immaculately refurbished house. From the Ingle Nook fireplace to the five colour-coordinated bedrooms, it was love at first sight. At 895 grand, it's 45,000 over budget, but even the garden won them over. They've not asked me for builder's quotes, they've not asked me to investigate the loft. They simply need to take a second look and see if it can seriously work for the family. The gardens have been a difficult issue the whole way through the search. Mm. Yeah. Having seen all the houses that you have done and realised this is, this is kind of what we get, are you, are you more comfortable with accepting it? I think it's definitely. We've looked far and wide and definitely agree that this is about as good as you're going to get. I think you've opened our eyes to that. I think this mm. county has surprised us. You know, even at a million pounds like we saw yesterday, you don't get a lot for your money. And this is fantastic. I think the difference here is you've got countryside on both sides, both aspects of the house. Mm. And I think that transforms what you get yeah. in terms of what you see, because it gives you the illusion that you have actually a lot more space mm. than you actually do. A great success with the garden, but how about Shane's need to add value? So you're gradually coming to terms with, with the inability to add value here? Yes. I think it's, but I think it's a far more practical house for our stage of life. Mm. I think with two young kids, I think you've pointed that out a few times. I've spoken to Anne-Marie about it quite a lot. In actual fact, this makes a lot more sense. You look as though you're kind of more at peace. It's the perfect setting for a lovely family, comfortable family home. Yeah. You could at last put down roots, mm. get to know community, 
Absolutely. Stop packing and unpacking every, mm -hmm. every few months. It, just be able to decorate the rooms for the boys. That in itself yeah. would just be such a joy. Mm. Definitely. Lots to look forward to. Yes. If we can get it. It looks like they've finally decided on a house. However, at 895,000, I wonder what Shane's business brain will be saying to him now. Looks like the time has come for you to head back into those shark-infested waters. So how do you want to play things? What do you want to do? I think we're going to go for it. Do you have a, a figure or a particular tactic in mind, or should we sort of discuss the, the whys and wherefores of, of different tactics. I'd like to try and get the maximum advantage we can for our position. So my sense is to try and maybe come in a bit lower and then get talked up to a certain price and see where we end up. That's my instinct. I think you're absolutely right. It's on the market at 895,000. It's been sitting there for a couple of three months. However, about 25,000 of that price is probably due to the beautiful way that it's finished and presented. Yeah. So if you were just looking at the bricks and mortar, um, you wouldn't get much. You'd get somewhere between 850 and 870, somewhere there is, is, is probably its true value. 860 is a good number. I'm thinking slightly less than that and trying to arrive at 860 would be fantastic. Yeah. Well, why don't we go in at 835, 840? I thought it's exactly. Hello, Joey. Hi. Well, I do have an offer for you. They're living in rented um, in Beaconsfield at the moment and have money sitting in the bank, 100% um, ready to go, fully organised and committed. The full asking price uh, is, is a difficult one to justify, or we, we've certainly struggled to justify it. The figure that we have come up with is 835,000. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. Thank they haven't had an offer, so she hasn't had the, the conversation with her client. So it's a difficult one for her to gauge how they're going to react. Well, it's started. Yeah. Ball's in their court. Perfect. Hello, Phil Spencer. Hi, Jerry. Can you give me an idea of what it might have to look like? I do have instructions to increase it, but it's getting toppy, to, to put it mildly. Um, but they would pay 850,000 for the house. Um, mm -hmm. I'll wait to hear. Thank you very much for your help. OK, good night, bye-bye. We're getting there. That's good news. Her gut feel is that he'll come back in the morning and ask for a little bit more. I think we're feeling happy. Yes, definitely. Well done, Phil. You're in a strong buying position, and I'll admit you're pretty talented at this. Well, they are in a strong buying position, and this is the bit that I really enjoy. The next day, Shane and Anna Marie receive a telephone call regarding their offer. Hello. Hello. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you so much. OK, bye. Bye-bye. Wow. A homeowner. <laughs> Fantastic. The negotiation worked. They've got the house of their dreams for £850,000, exactly what they wanted to spend, and forty-five grand under the asking price. What about Andrew and Emma? Any news? They've left 635 grand on the table for the thatch cottage, and I've just had an interesting phone call. Hello. Hi, I've just been talking with the agent. Oh, good, excellent. Um, the, um, the bad news is that the other people that viewed made a much higher offer. Mm. OK. Um, but the good news is it hasn't been accepted because they are in a chain, and if you were to be able to put 5,000 extra, they, mm. they, would, they would sell it to you. OK. Well, I'm now in a position where I would be able to actually find that further five. Okay. So I think that there's a deal, really. Terrific. Great. I'll get on to it right now. Thank you. Cheers. Brilliant. Ooh, ooh. I think you might cry. You might cry. We'll have a new home. It's great. <laughs> 
you see, no chain, all gain. However, less than two months later, Andrew felt compelled to make a U-turn. Around the time that we were expecting to start completing, things started changing in the markets. It meant that I felt very insecure about proceeding with the purchase. So I decided that the best thing for us was that we pulled out of the sale. It is a shame that Andrew and Emma chose not to buy the cottage, but thankfully our hard work was not entirely in vain. Kirsty introduced us to Padbury as a, a possibility of somewhere to live. Once we'd seen it, we sort of fell in love with the village. So the Jarvis family flew the nest of Emma's parents and found themselves a rental home in you know where. I think we've been really lucky finding this place in Padbury, which we really can call home for the time being. So a shift from the original plan, but a happy one nonetheless. For Shane and Anne-Marie, it was a different story. Five months after we secured them the detached five-bed house, they were all settled in and feeling the benefits. This move has already changed a lot. Everything was on hold. The kids are now in a position where I think they're a lot happier. I think we're a lot happier because we're now it's more stable, we're going to be here for a number of years. And even though it may be ideal now, Shane still hasn't curbed his enthusiasm for development. We do want to change the... Uh, garage into, let's say, a more of a family room, taking the, down the wall between the kitchen and dining room to make it a, a larger space. We're looking at the attic in terms of maybe converting that at some point in the future as well. And Anne-Marie is looking forward to putting down the roots she craved for her family. It's a beautiful, beautiful area. The schools are great. It's a lovely, lovely community. Everybody's so friendly. You know, I'm, I really look forward to actually bringing them up here. Definitely. I'm really looking forward to a long, happy stay in this house. All's well that ends well. <laughs>